Hey, welcome back to the studio and the installation of our Audio Arts R60 console. Custom studio furniture. We've got so much stuff going on in here. We've got the acoustic panels that we put together. We have so many things to show you. But today what I'm going to show you is how to actually make up the connectors to connect the audio and the logic to your uh, on-air console. Now we've, we've got the Audio Arts R60 and it's a great value. You can find them all over the place. You can pick them up for seven, eight, nine hundred dollars in really good condition. Now I'm pretty fortunate. Mine got destroyed. I bought it at a good price and it was very reliable. But it got destroyed by the hurricane that we had last year and I was insured so the insurance company paid to send it back off to Wheatstone and have them completely rebuild the console from tip to tail. So I have the last brand new R60 console ever to leave the Wheatstone factory in New Bern and that's pretty cool. Now, uh, so everything I show you is going to be on an R60 console. Yours may be different if you have a different model number, but the R60 is a bulletproof, simple, straightforward little board and it will last you a lifetime as long as you don't have trees landing on it. So the one thing about the R60 console is it uses, like most broadcast consoles, some sort of a proprietary connector that you have to put together. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to go and find the owner's manual, the installation manual for your console. Now I got this one off of Wheatstone's website. I just downloaded a PDF file and then I took it over to CopyMax and I had them bind it with a spiral. You want to get the spiral if you're going to do this because this way you can open the book and you can lay it flat on the desk and you can look at it and work on your stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at the connectors. If you buy the install kit, you get a bag of these, you get a bag of the pins that go in them, and you, there's other cool things too, like I bought the crimping tool. If you don't have a good set of crimpers, you'll want to get some before you start a project like this because it ain't no fun. Uh, also, uh, let's see, in the kit it came with a pin extractor that I just threw at you. Oddly enough, I have a second one here. So here's the other pin extractor, and what happens is, what this is for is if you accidentally push a pin, let me show you this connector up close with wires in it. Those wires have to go in a very specific order as outlined in the manual. It tells you right here on this page exactly what each one of those pins is. And of course, you know, you have to get them right. So these are 12 pin connectors, which is uh, two stereo pairs is what they are. But if you, get a, if you get the pins in wrong, which I've already done since I started this install, you take this here pin extractor and you stick it in the hole. And you work it in there until it snaps in place and then you press the shaft and it pushes the pin out. Now, it's not easy. I'm going to tell you right now it's not easy. It's a pain in the ass and it'll tear your hands up. So the best advice is really try not to get the pins in the wrong holes when you put them together. So having said that, I've got a cable that I made up here. Now, we've got a screw terminal block over here in the corner of the table. Let me back up so you can see me pointing. We've got a screw terminal block over there, and everything that connects in this console is going to go from this console to that screw terminal block over there, and then from there it goes out to the equipment that it connects up to. The important thing, the major important thing, and I can't stress this enough because this is a mistake I made last time I installed this console, is I didn't make the wiring from the console to the to the terminal block long enough. So I ended up having to mount the terminal block in a place that was extremely inconvenient to get to. So this time, I actually pulled a cable through all the way to where it's going to go, mounted the terminal block, and so I started making up cables, and I've got a reel of cable. I'm going to have to pick it up and show you because, well, the camera's over there. I've got a reel of Belden Brilliance cable. 8451. It's just single mono instrument cable or audio cable. So I have to run two of these for every stereo pair. My wife made the box that the reel spins on. Isn't that cool? Um, so there's that. So what you do is you grab the end of your your Belden cable and you pull it out until you get exactly the length you want. And again, these were all pre-measured. And so then I will cut that one off. And because I'm running stereo pairs, I'm going to have to pull a second wire out too. So I can put that back over there where it doesn't go at all. And then I'll pull the second one out.
and just run them side by side and hope you haven't run over it with your chair. And then we'll cut this one off. Now I've got a pair of cables for stereo. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to label these wires so that I know what they are later on. So to do that, I've got my handy dandy label maker. And so I will type out my label. Let me see what the last one I made was. These are the microphone cables. Okay, so 4B, right and left. And what is this one? 4A. So 4A and 4B. So now I got to do 5A and 5B. So I'll just turn on my label maker. And by the way, you want to label everything you put together in the studio. And to do that, I'm using this Dymo label maker. I picked it up on Amazon for, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks, something like that, and bought a bunch of the little rolls of tape that go with them. But you got to label the stuff. You have to label the wires, otherwise later on, when you're trying to work on something, you have no idea which wire is which. So, I'm going to go, what does this one say? This one says, okay, so this one will be 5 a left. So then you print that. And then you print a second one because you need one for each end of the cable, right? And then you do 5A right. And then you print yourself off two of those. All right. So the easiest way to do this is I've got, again from Amazon, a box of pre-cut shrink wraps. They're about two inches long. Should cover pretty much any label you're going to make. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take these labels. Now they won't just stick to the cable on their own. They're going to want to come right back off. So I'll take this label and go up about six or eight inches up the wire and just kind of wrap them around the wire and hold it there until you get a shrink over it and take your shrink stick it over the end and just kind of push it in and roll your label until you get the shrink started over it and then it's under the shrink got this really ultra cool crack lighter from the vape store but it's a torch and this is perfect for this heat shrink you just go up here and heat it up and let it close all up and then once that's done that labels never gonna come off of that cable unless you cut it off so there's that okay then I'll go to the other end, put the label on that one. This is a very tedious job working on a console like this, but believe me, the extra effort is really worth it after you're done and you've got this incredible mixing console. The other cool thing about the mixing console is it does neat little things like when I turn the microphone on, it actually turns the light on outside the door. It's got buttons on and off for each slide fader channel. But each one of those buttons, it turns the audio on and off, but it also can perform other functions. Like it can mute the speaker so you don't get feedback when your microphone's on. By the way, the heat shrink is not the hard part of this project. <laughs> it looks tedious already, I know it does. But the heat shrink is not the hardest part. So there's that wire. Now we're gonna do our right cable. And again, we're going to go about six or eight inches up the side of the cable. Stick it on there. And just give her a twist and a wrap. Try to get it as tight on there as you can. And then run your shrink up over it. And heat her up. 
And this is one of those projects that when you first start, it's going to seem like you have to redo a bunch of stuff. But as you get into this project, it becomes easier and easier to do these sorts of things because, you know, repetition, once you've done it enough times, then it kind of becomes second nature to you. And the biggest scary thing is those connectors, those Molex 12-pin connectors. But I'm not actually going to be using all of the 12 pins in all of the, all of the uh, connectors. I'm going to try to use as many as I can and pre-wire them down to the, to the terminal block over there because at some point in the future I might want to add something. I might want to put a CD player in or I might want to put another audio sound card, USB audio card or something else that attaches to this console on an input. And believe me, when you pre-wired it and all your fittings are down there, it's much easier to add stuff like that when it's already wired for it than it is to try to figure it out after the fact. All right, so that's my two wires right there. So I can put the shrinks away. And I can... The other thing is you want to try to keep the table as clean as you can because it gets messy really fast. And when it starts getting messy, you can't find nothing. And I have ADHD, so I can't find nothing anyway. So the best thing I can do is every time there's a little bit of trash, get it in the can. All right. So now I'm going to strip the end of the wire about an inch off the end of it. You could do more if you want. I find it's a little more comfortable to work at about an inch. Just cut it, pull it off. And uh, the thing about this Belden wire is that the shield foil is tight and you really have to work to get it off. The Belden wire really is a good investment. It's the best there is. Belden knows how to make cable. That's for sure. All right. Now, I'm going to strip off the smaller wires and about a quarter of an inch on that. You don't really need any more than a quarter of an inch stripped off of that. I like to dump a few pins into the bottom of the bottom tray of the console so I can just reach and grab one. All right. Here's what the pins look like. They're itty bitty. And the ones you get from Wheatstone are silver, which is really nice. Instead of some Chinese tin or you know some alloy that, you know, prone to corrosion later on. All right, so I, I learned through trial and error with this with this crimper, and this is a pretty heavy duty crimper. And you gotta have pretty big hands to work with this crimper too because <laughs> the jaws open really wide. So you position your pin inside. Like that. And because these are ratcheting, they lock in place once you start closing. And they will not open until you've gone all the way closed with them. So just slide your wire in there and crimp it. Okay. Then you get another pin. Stick it in there. Just close the jaws of the thing just far enough where it'll hold that pin so you can stick the wire in there and crimp it. Yes, I was getting very frustrated with these because I didn't really know how to use this crimping tool. Because I guess when you buy something from Wheatstone, they assume you know how to use the tools that come with it. And I have had all kinds of crimpers in my life, but never a pair like these. All right, there they are. And then you're going to take one of these handy dandy 12 pin connectors. Now the book says that the top row of the connectors is left. The top row of the 12 pin connectors is left. 
and it tells you which pin, shield, low, high, tells you all that. All right. So the way you put these pins in is you stick it in the hole and you just kind of gently turn the connector until the pin starts to seat and you push it till it clicks and then it's in. The low, which is the black, goes in the center hole and then the red one, which is the high, goes into the remaining hole. All right. And you, when, once they click, they're in. Okay? And that's what you have. So now we'll take the right cable. And we'll cut about an inch off of it. And then we'll wrestle with that foil wrapper inside. This cable is foil shielded in addition to having a shield wire. It's very nice, very quiet cable. Then you just peel it off. It's like peeling a banana. Okay. Then remember we're going to cut about a quarter of an inch off of each of the other wires. Obviously the shield is bare so you don't have to strip any of that off. And just like good crimpers, you want a good pair of strippers too. Because this stuff, cheap strippers, you're not going to use your teeth for this. There's hundreds of wires in here. You're not using your teeth for this. And if you do, well, you're a scary individual. But, get a good pair of crimpers. Now, this is the crimpers that Wheatstone used to ship with this console. And they're okay. They work fine. Uh, I did have a problem with some of the pins coming apart after I'd crimped with them which is probably why they have this updated version in there now. You know, I had a friend ask me, well, why did you, instead of having them rebuild the console, why don't you just get a new one? Why don't you just get like an R55E? Well, let me tell you something. I work with the R55E out in the field, and they are not good consoles. They're not reliable. They're not dependable. And if you think that these connectors are a pain in the ass, those have like the 32 pin connectors that, yeah, no thanks. I didn't realize that when you buy a console like this, or even if you get one from somewhere else, you know, used from somewhere, whatever, I didn't realize that they would sell you what they call a pre-install kit. I guess they've got a little old lady working over at Wheatstone. This is what she does all day. She just makes these things up and hooks them up to crone blocks. And then you get to buy it for, I don't know how much it is. Uh, it's probably at least 500 bucks. I mean, these pins, I believe these pins were somewhere around a dollar a piece. But again, they're silver pins. All right, here's our connector. And we've got our right. So we'll snap that shield in there. And it's really just a matter of getting the hole to line up. You don't even have to turn the connector. As long as you get that pins starting to line up in there. Now sometimes it gets a little tight for your finger, especially when you have hot dogs like mine. So I just have a little screwdriver that I'll use to push that pin in. Make sure that it seats all the way. Sometimes you don't need it and sometimes you do. You just got to get that pin lined up perfectly with the hole and then it'll slide right in. And you'll hear that click and you'll know it's done. Okay. So that's one pair. Now, on channel 5, which is the fifth slider in, 
I think I want to be able to put an A and a B audio device, stereo audio device to that. So what I've got to do now is I've got to do two more cables, label them, get them in there, and uh, get them connected up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yes, by all means, you want to make sure that when you do this, that you pull enough cable because it is no fun at all when you realize that you shorted yourself a bunch of cable length. And it wasn't even like it was a lot of cable that I shorted myself. It was only like a couple of inches. But it was enough that I couldn't put my terminal blocks where I wanted them. So, always be careful of that. All right. So, I'll set these in the console for the moment and make my labels for these. And once you get into a rhythm with this, it's pretty easy to keep going and get it done. Remember, you're going to print two of them, one for each end of the cable. Okay. So, we'll get our shrinks back out. And get those ready to go. You know, you got to have a good vape to do this, right? Okay, so we're going to start with left. Always work left, right, left, right, left, right. You know, the biggest problem is that as I get older, my manual dexterity drops off a little bit. And I have a hard time picking the backing off of these labels. If you have a kid that you can have help you out, bring your kid into the studio and have them peel the labels for you. They'll enjoy helping out. Don't bring a teenager because they know everything and they'll tell you you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Tom, how do you know about that? Oh, I know about that. I'm telling you. A little crack lighter to shrink that wrapper up a little bit all right and the other thing you want to do is you want to try to get the labels so that they line up side by side when the cables are run side by side maybe that's just a a CDO thing maybe that's me I have CDO it's like OCD but all the letters are in the right order which is odd because I also have ADD and uh, that kind of disqualifies me for OCD, I think. All right. Here we go with the pins again. Separate them out like little chicken feet. Strip those wires. Oops. There it is. All right, start with that shield. It's almost like hunting where you squeeze the trigger, but you don't want to squeeze it too fast because it might make you miss your target. You might snatch it too hard and then the you miss the part where you actually crimp the wire. And the wire falls out. Now the last time I did this, I thought it would have been a good idea to solder these in addition to crimping them. And I still felt that way this time. But after seeing how this crimp tool works, and how they look really great after you're done, I thought, well, that may just be a waste of time because these don't look like they're going to come apart. They look like professional professionally installed connectors. All right, now we're working with the left, so that will go right under the right from the A channel. So we'll yeah, let me read it and make sure that I got the right thing. All right. 
because you really don't want to use those pin extractors if you don't have to because they will tear your hand up and they are not friendly at all all right then the black one goes in the middle sometimes it takes a little bit of finesse to get them all in there and get them all lined up but they will go and there's three and then we have the right channel wire I aspire to become a good show host I work for a great show host who does a TV show on uh, Velocity. A little show called Gears you might have heard of. That guy knows what he's doing. And I get to be his voiceover guy, which is kind of cool. All right. Put these last ones in. Click. 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 So there you go. All four of them hooked up. And then what I like to do is take a zip tie and go around right at the edge of where you stripped all the wires. Make it nice and tight. And then get your little nippers out. I got a little special pair of nippers just for the just for the zip tie. And there it is. There it is. And I try to keep it all nice and rolled up so that it doesn't get out of hand. And then when it comes actually time to thread these through the table and through the loom and through all the places I'm going to thread it through, I can find them and they're not all ragged and nasty. I got two of them that are longer than the others. What's that all about? What the hell? Damn it, boy. I thought I was pretty good about it. Look, I mean, these labels are way the hell up here. That's crazy. All right. Well, I'll have to address that later. And, uh, just to make sure it kind of stays put, I don't think I need to put a zip tie on it. That's kind of a waste. So I'll just go over here with masking tape and go around it, which is fine. I don't think I'd store them with masking tape because it gets sticky after a while. But that's it. That's how you put those connectors together. And of course, you know, you reset for the next set of connectors clean everything up, scrape it all into the garbage. And my wife has a little mini broom and dust pan that I saw earlier this evening that almost became mine. Well, that's all there is to making these cables up. In the next video, I'll show you how to hook them to the screw terminal blocks. It may not be the next video, but in a later video, I'll show you how we hook them to the screw terminal blocks and how all that stuff works. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm a noob at this, so subscribe. Let me know you're watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to answer. Thanks so much. Have a great day, night, evening. Thanks so much for watching.